Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Kendall Fisher. I am the host and producer of GrowWire, the GrowWire show. And some of you may have seen me embarrassing myself out on the expo floor. Don't run from me. Come help me. I need help. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. Day two, second keynote of the day. Now, Gary is actually in the back getting ready. He has a little spy cam back there. So we thought, let's see how he's doing. Let's check it out. Okay, Gary, we're just about finished. Thank you, Bobby. I am looking good, but I think I need a little <laughs> bit. Your hair is gonna look great out there. All right, I'll leave it to the pro. Yeah. There you are. Hey, Evan. How you doing, champ? Awesome. You got this? Yeah. All right, well, I'm sure you do. Here's the thing. You've been doing my slides for a bunch of years. You've done a great job. Thank you. But now there's an audience. They're okay. They might laugh at your jokes. Don't be nervous. Evan, I've got this. All right, well, I just got a couple pointers for you. Tell me what to do for 10 years. All right, give me your pointers. Number one, that when you throw the explosives, throw them away from you and not towards anybody else. Oh, yeah. This is crappy code. Ah! Crappy code! But I'm not planning on using any explosives today. Number two. Don't talk with your mouth full of peanut butter. Mm. I'm not really the best orientation student. Mm. But every day I'm out sleep is orientation. We orient ourselves to our customer, customer mm, and we do it quickly. With Oracle, we can do it even better. Huh? What? Evan, I've got this. Two minutes, Mr. Weisenheimer. It's Weisinger. One last thing, and it's a biggie. The clicker. It only has one button, and that button only goes forward. So? If you make a mistake, repeat after me. Go. Go. Back. Back. One slide. One slide. Please. Please. That's all I have to teach you. Weisenheimer, you're on! Go get him, tiger. Please welcome SVP Product Management, Gary Wiesinger. Welcome to Sweet World 2019. I'm uh, what now? I know, I know, I know. Well, first of all, uh, oh, okay. thank you. Oh, all right. Have any confetti back there? It's all good, all good. Okay. Still cleaning confetti okay. off. Thank, thanks for that okay. earlier, by the way. Okay. G give. All right. Give it to good me. Good luck, champ. Thanks, coach. Finally, I have the clicker. <laughs> it was actually a lot of fun uh, making that. To fit us both in that mirror shot, we had to sit close. Really close. Like, HR representative needs to be in the room close. I now know what it feels like to have my boss breathing down my neck, quite literally. But the hardest part of making it was actually acting so dismissive of Evan. I've learned so much from him, working for him, being a part of this incredible organization and really community that he created has been the highlight of my career. And so thank you, Evan, for all you've done, really for, for all of us. <clears throat> all right. All right, enough of the Evan Love Fest. Let's talk growth. Actually, first, let's talk legal disclaimer. Now let's talk growth. Growth is great. Growth is success. As my kids would say, growth is lit. I don't know what that means. As the saying goes, if you're not growing, you're dying. So by logical extension, growth is literally life. We all strive to grow as individuals and organizations. And business growth is fun. You have more customers you're helping and serving. You have more products and services you're creating and selling. You have more employees you're working with. And you're making more money. 
And we all love to make more money, especially in this town. So everything about growth is great, right? Well, growth is hard, really hard. Like making money in a Vegas casino hard, which for me is seemingly impossible. You've probably heard of the Inc. 5000. Every year, Inc. Magazine puts together a list of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in America. A few years ago, they did a follow-up study with the Kauffman Foundation and looked back at the companies that had been on the list five to eight years prior, and they found something shocking. Two-thirds of those companies, the fastest growing companies in America, had either shrunk in size, been sold at a low valuation, or were out of business altogether. Two-thirds. So growth is hard, but sustainable growth is really, really hard and statistically rare. And we know this from personal experience. NetSuite has grown a lot, thanks to many of you, with many of you, but it hasn't been easy. During my 10 years with the product team, we've, we've grown that team, the product team, 12x, 12 times. We've grown from a few offices to over 20 offices in 16 different countries, needing to reinvent our processes and how we work along the way. So why is growth so hard? You have to answer and address a lot of difficult qu questions. When do you hire more employees, and how many, and who, and where? When do you launch a new product or service, and what product or service, and who do you sell it to? When do you go international, and which countries? How do you manage your growing supply chain? Do you in-house it or outsource it, or both? How do you ensure good margins on projects? How do you uh, not run out of cash? How do you stay close to your customers as you get bigger? How do you not become overwhelmed by all that complexity? as you grow. It's a lot. So yes, growth is hard, but it is also great. And we're committed to helping you achieve your growth story. So throughout our history, we've strived to grow ahead of your needs. From the beginning, a single system to run a whole business delivered in the cloud was way ahead of its time. Cloud is now the standard. And others have tried to create suites or are creating suites, but they're way behind us. In 2002, we released executive dashboards, way ahead of the competition, loved by our customers. We've continued to reinvent, have some great things in the 19.1 release, and more things coming that we'll show you today. In 2008, we released One World. We saw that the world was becoming smaller, that even the smallest companies would need to trade and operate globally. And we now have customers operating in over 200 different countries. Six years ago, it was omnichannel commerce. We saw that retail, distribution, and manufacturing were changing, that your customers would want to interact with you through multiple touch points, phone, web, in-store, and mobile. And we also saw that you would, need to, would, would want to fulfill to them through multiple channels in your supply network. Three years ago, it was sweet billing. As we saw product businesses adding services and service businesses adding products and all kinds of businesses selling as subscriptions, inventing new business models, ripping up the rules of billing and RevRec. And we saw the need to put that in the core of your ERP system, and many of you are benefiting from that today. Two years ago, we launched Sweet People, HCM unified with ERP, commerce, and the rest of the system. Employees are the core of your business, so your HCM system needs to be at the core of your business system. And then last year was the Intelligent Suite, leveraging data science and machine learning across the suite and you'll see some of the intelligent applications we're working on today. So to build all of that and the rest of the suite, we've invested nearly 19 million hours into creating and delivering the suite. That's nearly, nearly 10,000 person years of work. By comparison, the Empire State Building took only 7 million hours to build. We're way beyond that. That thing is small. Literally, we make it look small. And unlike many of our competitors, who have multiple products and multiple generations of products and versions and patch releases, and they have customers in all of them, and they're investing resources in a number of them. All those 19 million hours have gone into one product, the product you're using today. And we're not slowing down. In this coming year, we'll invest another 4 million hours into your product. So the obvious question is, that you all wanna, you're all here to hear, is what's next? But that's actually not the most important question. At a minimum, it's not the first question we answer. I want to share with you a little bit about how we think about product strategy and design. 
instead of what, the key questions we focus on first are who, how, and why. We first get clear and focused on who we're solving problems for. I know the technical writers on my team are going to say it's for whom you're solving problems. But whom, how, and why just didn't sound as good. So who we're solving problems for, who we're helping succeed, who we're going to delight. And we think about it on three key dimensions, your industry, your country, and your role. And once we've determined who we're focused on, then we use empathy to deeply understand you and your needs. Next, we get clear on the how, how we're going to solve your needs, and not just solve them, but delight you. Solve them so well that you can't imagine doing your jobs any other way. And there are four ways we're doing this across the suite. The first is something we like to call sweetness. You all understand the benefit of a unified system. Sweetness is about taking that to another level, deliver, delivering visibility and automation that no point solution ever can. So think about what you could do in e-commerce web store search if you had all of your financial data about your items and your customers in your e-commerce system. Or what could you do in a self-service billing portal if, that, if your billing system had a world-class e-commerce platform built into it? Or how could you reimagine HR performance management if you had all of your ERP and commerce and other operational metrics in your HR system? Well, you don't have to answer them. We are. And actually, you know the answer to the last one, because Evan kind of stole it from me and presented it this morning. But he's the boss, so he gets to do that. But we're going to show you all three of these today. The second is analytics, better visibility to help you make better business decisions hundreds of times per day, leveraging, aggregating data from across the suite, and then delivering that visibility throughout the suite, not just in reports, but in dashboards and forums and many other pages. Third is intelligence, leveraging your rich company-wide data with sophisticated data science and machine learning to give you deeper insight, greater automation, and better interactions. And then finally, and maybe most importantly, is experience. We're focused on creating experiences that make it faster and easier for you to do your jobs. You're going to hear that faster and easier term a lot today, maybe because I'm too unimaginative to come up with another term, but more so because it's how I think all day long, how we think all day long, faster and easier, faster and easier. How can we make it faster and easier? Evan likes to make drinking games out of our presentations in Vegas, so I guess that'll be mine. Um, but please, drink responsibly, because I'm going to say it a lot. A big part of that is creating experiences tailored for your role and for your task. So we're infusing all of these throughout the suite, and you'll see them infused through the, the demos today. Finally, we focus on the why. Why these products and services will help you succeed. And these are the fundamental benefits of NetSuite, your blueprint for growth, as Evan talked about this morning. The real-time visibility and insight across your business you need to make better business decisions the control to achieve profitable, sustainable growth, the agility to adapt to new opportunities and the inevitable unforeseen challenges, productivity to help you do your jobs more quickly and efficiently and enable scalable growth, and the collaboration across departments and teams delivered by a single unified system to run a business. So only the who, the how, and the why leads to the what, but the right what's delivered in the right ways to enable your growth and success. And we're very excited to show you some of that today. So today, in this conference, are really all about enabling your growth stories. So we've structured this presentation in terms of two growth stories, one for a product-focused business and one for a service-focused business. And as we've talked about, more and more companies are, are hybrids, blurring the lines. So what, much, of, much of what we'll talk about applies to most types of businesses. Financials is critical for every kind of business, so we'll cover how we're growing our financials capabilities across all industries. And finally, we'll describe the technology that we're, we're creating to enable your growth, success, and competitive edge. So let's start with our product growth story. In distribution, manufacturing, and retail industries, there are multiple ways to grow. Launching new products and services, finding new customers, and going global, to name a few. To tell you more about how we're going to help you take advantage of these growth opportunities, I'd like to welcome to the stage a veteran of this stage, someone who's famous for showing off colorful web stores while wearing a colorful jacket, Alison Auclair, VP Product Management. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, Gary. This one colorful enough for you? Fantastic, as always. I know it's not always. the red suit, but... <laughs> Hi, everyone. 
In order to show how the new capabilities we're working on will help drive your growth, we'll use the scenario of launching a new product line. Posh, a manufacturer of apparel, is at a critical inflection point in their growth. It was easy to launch the first line, but in order to continue to grow and to ward off the competitors nipping at their heels, they must find a second act. The best possibility is a beauty line that they could sell to both their existing customers and new customers like salons. In this demo, you'll see how the power of the suite uniquely enables Posh to quickly and flawlessly execute on the end-to-end -end process, from opportunity identification to planning, B2B launch to delivery. We'll start with validation of the opportunity. Based on anecdotal evidence, Posh thinks that a beauty line is a great opportunity, but failure is not an option. They need to make sure. Fortunately, Suite Analytics gives them the insights that they need right at their fingertips. So Mike, the marketing manager at Posh, will start by validating the potential customer targets using a customer segmentation analysis in Suite Analytics. He analyzes the purchase history from the direct-to-consumer part of Posh's business using a customer segmentation analysis that looks at customer profitability and clusters customers by profitability and order frequency. Setting a minimum cluster size of 500, he runs the analysis. Mike is able to easily visualize that his customers fall into four clusters. The most interesting one is the top left, customers who are highly profitable but don't order frequently. He wants to know more about this segment, so he drills through the characteristics that the built-in intelligence of NetSuite has told him are highly correlated with profitability. He sees that customers in this segment are made up predominantly of women who buy the high-so fashion line via mobile. These customers may be a great target to upsell the new beauty line. It would have taken him weeks to get this information on his own. So Mike decides to save this list for his future upcoming research and marketing campaigns. Next, let's go to planning. So the new line is testing well, and it's time to plan and produce the products. Posh knows that they will only be successful if they get the product in the customer's hands at the right time. So they need a plan to ensure success. In this segment of the demo, we'll see how the supply chain team at Posh identifies contract manufacturers to make the line, make sure that they can meet the expected demand with planned future supply by configuring an allocation strategy, and find the most cost-effective way to increase fulfillment capacity to fulfill this new line. So Lisa, the supply chain manager at Posh, has sourced the contract manufacturers to make the product, and now she's ready to enter a PO to the contract manufacturer who will fill the mascara and conditioner. Using the new outsourced manufacturing capabilities coming later this year, Lisa is able to quickly and easily enter her PO. On the Outsourced Item tab, sub-tab, she has a tailored view that makes it quick and painless for her to enter her PO to her manufacturing partners. As she enters the items, NetSuite saves her time by recommending the preferred locations for the manufacturing to take place. As she saves her purchase order, a work order is automatically generated to the contract manufacturer. On the work order, Lisa has direct visibility to the progress of the production. She can easily see the build status as well as material availability. She knows that production is on track and can easily correct for any material shortages, including consigned inventory to the contract manufacturer. As Lisa receives the items, in one single interaction, she's able to easily update for Posh as well as the contract manufacturer. In this simple interaction, she's able to update and ensure the accuracy of inventory costs, levels, as well as contractor billing. The original PO contains the status of the overall order. Lisa is now sure that she will have enough supply for the launch. <laughs> so now, Let's talk about the allocation strategy. Lisa knows that she needs to set up a strategy to make sure that she'll be able to optimally match demand with the planned supply. Using the new order allocation capabilities coming later this year, order allocation will automatically allocate current and future supply based on the rules that Todd, the order admin at Posh, sets up in their allocation strategy. 
The new allocation, order allocation is omnichannel ready. Todd has been busy configuring different allocation strategies for B2B, high priority B2B customers, as well as B2C. Let's look at the strategy for the standard B2B customers. For B2C orders, Todd will fill, fulfill out of in-stock inventory, but for B2B, he chooses to include future inventory. He can include POs, transfer orders, and work orders, and for this strategy, decides to include them both. Todd decides to allocate these orders as close as possible to the expected sales order ship date to leave in-stock inventory available for high-priority B2B orders or B2C orders. He also chooses to make these orders in a soft allocation so that he leaves the possibility open to reallocate for higher priority B2B or B2C orders. Todd is thrilled that NetSuite saves him time by automatically doing the right thing in both B2B and B2C contexts. The new line is coming soon, so now Lisa, the supply chain manager, needs to figure out the optimal distribution strategy for the new line. Using the power of the suite, she works with Frank, Posh's CFO, to find the most cost-effective location considering both labor and facilities costs in suite analytics. Frank starts on his work dashboard with his workforce distribution portlet. He is able to easily see, based on the new suite people feature, uh, what his distribution is across the different labor types. He can see that contract labor is a significant part of his workforce and drills through to his dashboard to learn more. Frank navigates on his uh, dashboard to the workforce cost chart to find the most cost-effective location in terms of labor costs. He can easily see that San Antonio is the most cost-effective location. And he'll also fill down specifically to contractor costs as these are less expensive than full-time. So it's obvious that San Antonio is the cheapest, but now, using the power of the suite, let's layer facilities data from finance on top of this labor data from suite people. Now Frank can see that San Antonio is also the lowest cost location in terms of per employee facilities. It's clearly the right location to source this new line. So Lisa's ready now to open her Rex and suite people and get her people on board. <laughs> With the product plans now confirmed, we're ready to launch this new line to B2B customers for pre-orders. Posh knows that they must meet their customers where they want to be, which includes both personalized self-service as well as cross-channel journeys that allow them to interact seamlessly in online and offline interactions. So we'll start by seeing how Phil, the e-commerce manager at Posh, configures his site for the new launch using the new extensions, which are available now, and search boosting, which is coming later this year. Then we'll see how Selma, a sales rep at Posh, uses the new B2B personalization capabilities and next generation sales user experience coming over the next few releases to collaborate with Barbara, a B2B buyer at Posh, in a com combined online-offline flow. So Phil has been busy updating the descriptions and the images for his items on the site, but he wants to do more than just list products. He wants to drive interest and increase conversions. And extensions and search boosting are a great start. Phil visits SweetApp.com to see the extensions built by both NetSuite and partners that help merchants keep their site fresh without developer help. Compatible with both Sweet Commerce and Sweet Commerce Advanced, he sees extensions that allow him to set up product feeds and integrations. They can also help him add capabilities and uh, compellingly merchandise the site. This blog extension looks like a great way to get the Posh Beauty message out. He, a few minutes later, he's installed it, and he's started to get his blog set up. But he has a few more things to do before it's ready. Phil decides to swap out the hero image. He's so happy that he can make these changes all on his own. Next, to include a call to action, Phil uses the featured product extension to feature a beauty starter kit to encourage customers to buy. All he needs to do is enter the product name and number, and the description and image automatically populate from the catalog. That was so easy. Now all he has to do is set his changes to go live on the site, and he's ready to go. But Phil wants to also make sure that his products appear in the best possible light when customers search. So he previews the search term mascara to see what it looks like. 
Bill notices immediately that his highest profit items, the posh ultra rich and posh lush volumizing, are in the third row of the search results. Now, you leveraging that power of the suite, Phil is going to use item profitability data from ERP to optimize his search results online. He drags the search boosting slider up, and now he can see that his most profitable mascaras are right in prime real estate on the top row. All he needs to do is save his changes. They'll go live immediately, and his site is ready to go. Thank you. <laughs> Next, let's see how Selma will set up her private store for her customer, Belle Boutique, which she knows will drive loyalty and customer lifetime value. On the customer record, all Selma needs to do is scroll down to the website personalization tab and fill out a few quick things. Uploading a logo and welcome banner, selecting a skin to tailor the colors, and selecting a customer segment are all she needs to do to personalize the site. Now let's take a look at what the site will look like when Bell Boutique's buyers log in. We'll preview that site, and as you can see, it looks like it was made for Bell Boutique with just the right items and categories, contract prices that make it streamlined to order, branding that matches their brand, and a personalized touch, that messaging that speaks directly to their buyers. Selma will introduce this private store with her proposal for the new line to increase her chances of a successful sale. Next, Selma will create her proposal using the next generation sales user experience that NetSuite is working on now. Now hold on to your hats because we are completely reimagining what the sales experience will look like within NetSuite. Built with the new UI framework, the sales dashboard is intuitive, intelligent, and efficient. The visual pipeline view keeps Selma's deals top of mind. The activity list gives her intelligent recommendations to make her more productive. Her activity feed helps her keep her finger on the pulse of what's happening with her customers. And KPIs keep her focused and motivated. Selma can access her dashboard in a browser like this or via her tablet on the go with a mobile first responsive design. Selma loves that NetSuite gives her these intelligent recommendations. And she can see here that the NetSuite has recommended the customers that we think will be the best match for the new beauty line based on their patterns uh, like average order size product mix and order frequency. Conveniently, Bell Boutique is on the list, so she decides to leverage this proposed order to increase the likelihood of a sale. Now, the new order entry experience is e-commerce-like. She has a great, simple experience embedded right within the sales tools that she knows and loves. She has access to rich category information, faceted search, and the rich product details that she would see online, with a few sales-exclusive tidbits thrown in. No more manually cutting and pasting the SKU from the website into NetSuite to create an order. It's all right there for her. Real-time inventory also gives her an idea of when her customers can receive the products. This looks great, so she's going to add this additional starter kit for skincare to the proposal for Barbara. Now returning to her cart, Selma knows that if she adds a discount, uh, it might increase the likelihood of a sale. It is a risk trying to carry a new product. So she adds the discount and sends an email to Barbara with both the private store link as well as the proposal. Now, Barbara loves that Posh makes it so easy to do business with them. She can order whenever and wherever she wants, but she knows that Selma's already always ready to jump in and help her whenever she needs assistance. So Barbara gets an email introducing her to the new beauty line, her private store, as well as the suggested order from Selma. She clicks through to the website to look at the proposal. She immediately notices that the website is personalized for her with her logo, personalized content, as well as just the right items and categories. She's already done some research on the new line, so she clicks through to the recommended order to see what Selma has in mind for her. This recommended order will make it quick and easy for her to decide what she wants and put together her order. And she really appreciates that Selma's proposed a discount for her to try the new line. 
but she wants to add some additional items. Her shop sells a lot of mascara, and so she's going to do a search for mascara to see what's available to her. Notice that the most profitable items in the blog post that you saw earlier were right there at the top. So she decides to add some additional mascara to her order. Now, back in the order, this one brings a little tear to my eye because you can see that the allocation and promising capabilities that we talked about earlier are exposed right here in the commerce experience. This is customer service gold. Not only will Posh not oversell, but they have setting expectations with customers right from the get-go. That's talk about sweetness. So Selma decides, or Barbara decides that she's going to just convert her order. All she has to do is verify her addresses, enter her PO, and go ahead and place the order. That was so quick and easy, and she's really looking forward to the arrival of the new line. And ring, ring. Selma gets a notification on her dashboard that she made an additional sale. She loves that NetSuite makes it so quick and easy for her to be focused and drive new business. Now it's go time. We need to deliver those products and get them into customers' hands as promised. That's the definition of a success. So you'll see in this segment how the supply chain team at Posh gracefully manages disruptions to keep the top customers happy with reallocation and gets the products in the hands of customers quickly and easily with the new order release capabilities and WMS mobile application coming later this year. So Todd, the order admin at Posh, knows that production doesn't always go as planned, but he also knows that NetSuite has his back. Now, he got a notification earlier today that a machine at the co-packer went down and the Posh Ultra Rich Mascara delivery will be delayed. But he's able to easily fix that with allocation. Starting on the supply chain control tower, Todd gets a complete view of what's going on with fulfillment, including shipment trends, alerts that come through on his dashboard, as well as prediction of risks that haven't happened yet, but might happen and he needs to be aware of. Todd sees the, P the alert on his dashboard that tells him the PO has been delayed and clicks through to the PO allocation detail to see what customer orders might be impacted. He can see that VIP customer Bell Boutique's order now doesn't meet the promise date. He clicks through to reallocation to see the possibilities to make this customer happy. So NetSuite has automatically pre-selected some potential candidate orders to move based on the priorities that Todd configures. He can select whatever orders he wants, but he agrees with these recommendations. So he decides to go again, ahead and generate a recommendation. In the recommendation, Todd can see that Bell Boutique's order now will meet the promise date, and the orders that are impacted are lower priority and minimally impacted. He's so happy that NetSuite helped him to avoid a major customer service issue and keep his key customers happy. Now it's time to get that product out the door. It's the home stretch. The products have been received, and it's time to get those B2B pre-orders out to customers. Wanda, the warehouse manager, uses the order release capabilities to get an overview of everything that's happening with fulfillment. On her dashboard, she can see the progress of open waves. She can also see on the burn down chart that the assignments that she's made previously are almost done, and she needs to send some more work to the floor. So she drills through to the order release capabilities and uses a template to easily select the types of orders, B2B orders in this case, that she wants to send to the floor. She sees that Bell Boutique's order is here. She selects that as well as other VIP orders and send them, sends them to the floor for single order picking as that's more efficient for B2B. She checks the summary chart to see that she's sending enough work to the floor and then decides to release that wave. Now she has her confirmation and meanwhile, Mary, the picker, has just finished her last task and is ready to move on to the next one. She's so happy that NetSuite and Posh gave her a mobile application that's fast and tailored to her workflow. Mary decides to select picking and then single order picking as that she's been assigned to pick B2B orders. Now on her work list, she gets a prioritized list of what she needs to work on based on zones, product groups, as well as order priority. 
She clicks through to VIP customer Bell Boutique's orders and sees that the mascaras are all grouped together at the beginning for optimal picking flow in the warehouse. Mary scans the bin and then confirms the product information. Now, this mascara is new and she wants to make sure she has the right one. So she accesses product images to confirm. And yeah, that's the Paul Strelter Rich Mascara. She scans the item to confirm and finishes the picking process. She picks the rest of the order and auto prints the labels to her pre-configured printer, moves those items to the staging area where her colleagues will pick and fulfill the rest of the order. Mary has picked this order in record time and she's ready to move on to the next task. Now the fulfillment process is complete. The launch is a great success and Posh is well on their way to a flourishing second act. By harnessing the power of the suite, Posh was able to uniquely identify, plan, launch, and deliver this opportunity in a matter of months, not years. This faster time to market and flawless execution helped Posh grow and get ahead of their competitors. Back to you, Gary. Thank you, Allison. Just fantastic uh, solutions and experiences coming for our, co for our product uh, business, businesses. So now let's switch to our second growth story and let's look at growth through the lens of a service business. Service organizations face many of the same challenges, but their most valuable and constrained resource isn't products, it's people, which creates its own set of growing pains. Our, this story is about Ascend Services. It's a good name for a growing company. Almost sounds made up. A company that resells and implements cloud solutions, including facilities management software. They're growing fast putting a strain on all of their resources, but especially the project managers who are involved in both selling and delivering work. They could increase headcount, but of course, improving productivity and efficiency are much more scalable and profitable ways to grow. So let's look at how Ascend is using NetSuite technology to streamline their entire project lifecycle from the initial sale through planning, execution, and continuous management. Sales are the lifeblood of any company. You want to give your salespeople the tools and visibility they need to not only win the deal, but also set it up for success. And the ideal tool and experience for a service salesperson isn't going to be the same as what you saw for a product salesperson earlier. So Kyle, the sales rep at Ascend, wants to quickly put together a winning quote for their new prospect, Daintree Pro Property Management. Let's look at how we're optimizing the sales experience for services. So we're here on the estimate, and as Kyle starts to complete information, fill in fields like the customer name, NetSuite intelligently predicts the values for some of the other fields and puts in smart defaults, which he'll review and change as necessary. As we saw in the product growth story, the form guides him through the process, leading him to enter subscriptions next. And you see here that the transaction line fields aren't generic. They're tailored to the, the item type, in this case, a subscription item. And as he enters information, we provide inline, real-time information, like the maximum discount he's allowed, which I think is pretty dangerous to tell a salesperson the maximum discount allowed, but it's not my company. Next, it guides him to enter in the project uh, items. And, and again, you see that the transaction fields are tailored to this type of item, and even this type of project, a fixed milestone project. Now, check out the right. Based on Dean Tree's uh, industry size and region, NetSuite is comparing it to past deals with other customers and providing key sales metrics that will help Kyle close the deal. Metrics like customer conversion, average order value, and time to close. Now, those tabs up at the top aren't just tabs. They also provide summary information, information like the recurring revenue versus the one-time revenue, so he can make sure he's getting the right mix that his company wants. And when he saves the estimate, we not only create the estimate, we also create the subscription and project records. So in about a minute, we've created an accurate quote. We've also started the next step in the sales process. Because before the deal can close, sales must collaborate with the delivery team. And they need to ensure that the project is properly scoped with a projected margin that makes it a deal they want to win. NetSuite automatically created the project, which notified the delivery team and kicked off the collaboration. Let's see how our new project budget feature targeted for later this year makes it easy for project managers to create the right budget. 
So our project manager, Joshua, has been assigned to take lead on scoping the implementation. And on his dashboard, he conveniently sees that Dean Tree has been added to the Sales Pipeline Projects portlet. He's going to click through to the project. And once there, he's going to click on the new Work Breakdown Structure tab. The revenue has been brought in automatically from the estimate. That's great. So now he's going to focus his time on entering the cost and creating the work breakdown structure. And he doesn't need to do it from scratch. To save time and prevent errors, he can use one of the uh, templates that Ascend has already created. When he selects a template, he sees a preview of the key items within it, as well as the standard cost for each. This is the right template for Dean Tree, so he's going to go ahead and use it. And now we see a task optimized UI, a table optimized for managing work breakdown structures. He scans it, he can change or remove anything. In this case, he just needs to add an item for customization that, uh, that Dane Tree wants. And the UI guides him through the process, making it easy step by step. He just needs to select the, the uh, type of customization work and the number of hours, and the system takes care of the rest. Now, check out in the upper right, you'll see the margin meter there. Real time with every change, we're calculating the margin. It's, it's changed to red because we've dropped below the 40% target that Dean Tree has set for themselves. So Josh was going to look back through the budget and see if there are any opportunities for him to reuse cost. When he sees in prototyping, Dean Tree uh, doesn't need uh, as extensive a prototyping as the standard, so he's going to reduce these hours. Let's check out the margin meter, and we see, okay, it's getting a little bit better, a little closer to the target. When he clicks Save, we're going to get two notifications. One, that the margin is below the target. Now, the second one, very cool, an intelligent insight that based on past similar projects, when customization represented such a large percentage of the budget, they often missed their, mar their margins by a, an extensive amount. So of course, he's going to stop everything, go talk to the sales rep, figure out what they do, you know, maybe try to get a little more revenue, which will resolve this, uh, this problem. Because you know, obviously, it's a, it's a bit I said he was going to stop everything and go talk to the... I guess he's going to ignore the warnings and close them and just tell the sales rep to proceed with the deal. That's only in our fictitious story that never happens in the real world. So once they've won the deal and started a project, project managers need real-time visibility to maintain control of the project and adapt as necessary. That requires timely, accurate data, but that can be a challenge when the consultants are stretched thin and busy delivering projects in a fast-growing company. So we're making it faster and easier for consultants to get data like timesheets into the system. Let's look at how we're leveraging Oracle's digital assistant platform to streamline getting data into NetSuite. Our Ascend consultant, Jane, is finishing up her day on site. From her phone wallpaper, it looks like she'd rather be somewhere other than on site at Dean Tree. Good thing NetSuite's on the job. NetSuite has detected that she normally, intelligently uh, detected that she normally enters her timesheets at this time uh, of day, each day, and, and prompts her, gives her a notification. She taps on it, and it takes her into her messaging app with a thread started with a NetSuite assistant. She types in enter time to wake it up, confirms that's what she wants to do. Now it's going to use her phone's location to predict the customer project that she's working on. And it's correct. She says yes. It uses the, the project record to a, uh, ask her which of the, the known uh, tasks she's working on. She says implementation. Asks her for a brief description, which she enters, and asks her how many hours she worked on the project. Then it gives her a brief confirmation. She sees that everything is correct and taps on correct. And she's done. No login, no navigation, just a natural language chat to <laughs> thank you. By the way, feel free to interrupt any of us with applause anytime today. We will not be offended. Standing O's, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, uh, so in seconds, she's accomplished what I'm sure is every project consultant's favorite task. But it's another example of a, an experience that we're creating that is tailored to the role and to the task. So now with that data and all the other data in NetSuite, we can give the project manager the real-time visibility he needs to manage the project to success. Let's see how we're using suite analytics and intelligence to do just that. Now we're back at Joshua's dashboard, and now the Daintree project is, is in his actives, active projects portlet. We're going to drill down to that and click on the project dashboard icon. And now here on the project dashboard, 
in the suite analytics-based project budget versus actual chart, we can see the actual costs in the blue columns are trending higher than budget. That doesn't look good. So we're going to drill through, drill into the suite analytics workbook. And here we can slice and dice on the chart. We can hover to get additional information. We can filter simply by clicking on the legend. But to really understand the variance, we're going to go over to the variance by week pivot that's in the same workbook. And once there, all we need to do is drag budget code over from the available fields into the columns. And can immediately, we get a breakdown of the costs. We can immediately see that it's the implementation cost that's causing the problems. And now Joshua knows which consultant he needs to talk to to get things back on track. He wants to go back to that dashboard because he saw some, some risks highlighted. NetSuite's intelligent project risk prediction is saying there's a 78% chance that this project is going to run late. That's a problem. We need to dig in. It's saying that we're 7% behind schedule with 50% of the work done. Well, 7% doesn't sound like a big deal. But using machine learning, NetSuite is saying similar projects with had a similar, who had a similar delay at this stage often missed by 35% that the delays typically magnify. That is a big deal. We need to do something about that. Fortunately, it recommends uh, a mitigation strategy for us. It's telling us that if we put more senior resources on a couple of key tasks, we're likely to get things back on track. Insights like these will allow project managers to identify problems and act quickly, enabling them to deliver more successful projects. <laughs> Continuous improvement is critical for sustainable growth. So after the project is complete and successful, Ascend wants to continuously improve by deepening and expanding the relationship with the customer and developing, motivating, and growing their most important resource, their people. So for focusing first on the customer, you want to continuously engage your customers, helping them get the most out of the, the products and services they've already purchased from you, and also learn about more that they can buy from you. You want to do it in an efficient, scalable way that provides a great experience for the customer. Let's look at how Ascend is using a self-service portal powered by sweet billing and sweet commerce to do just that. So Jennifer, Daintree's CFO, wants to check on her last invoice. And she decides to try the self-service capabilities they have on their portal. She goes to their website, nice looking website, clearly powered by Sweet Commerce. She goes to the header and logs in. And once there on the portal, also nice looking, matches their brand, has a lot of great functionality for her, blog posts about how she can use their products, lists her invoices, subscriptions, case, uh, support cases. She can see her invoices there and get the information she was looking for. But what really grabs her eye is that banner on skyscraper optimization software, because you know, who wouldn't be excited about skyscraper optimization software? She wants to see if she can add it to her subscriptions, clicks through, clicks on the add-ons button, and there it is. Great. She can add it. Clicks through to it. She can learn more about it. She sees the pricing, she sees that there's tiered pricing by users, so she can save money by adding more users has the total annual cost, but it also tells her that it would end the new subscription at the same time as her current subscription, co-term in billing lingo, and tells her the prorated cost. So it's given her all the information she needs to make a, an informed purchase decision. She's excited. She wants to go do it. She doesn't need to call her sales rep. She simply goes down to the bottom of the screen, screen and clicks Confirm Purchase, and she's done. It's been added to her subscriptions. And she, it's ready for her to use. So through the, the self-service billing portal, Ascend has deepened and also expanded their relationship with Daintree efficiently and scalably. And again, this was enabled by the combination of sweet billing and sweet commerce, a great example of sweetness. All right. Let's finish our story with how Ascend can help their employees grow. So now that the Daintree project is complete, they want to evaluate the performance of the team. How is this done today at, at most companies? Well, they, the manager and the employee, they create goals and then typically forget about them for about 12 months. Then if HR forces them to write a performance review, they do um, with some subjective feedback and they, and they move on. Hopefully that's not true at your company, but uh, it's not true at, at Oracle NetSuite, of course, but uh, uh, far too many. Um, well, not anymore. We're working on a unique performance management solution that leverages the suite 
to give the employee and the manager real-time objective performance management throughout the year. So let's take a look. So Josh was on his employee center, and at the top you can see his My Goals portlet right there. At the beginning of the period, he and his manager agreed to two goals, increasing customer sat to four out of five and getting 30% uh, average project profitability. He also wants to add a new goal to improve his com project com on time completion percentage. He doesn't need to wait till the end of the period. He can go in any time, set a new goal. Now, the suite is going to come with a large number of pre-built performance metrics based on KPIs and metrics from across the suite. Of course, Ascend could add their own. The list is tailored to his role, so he selects the projects percent completed on time metric already built in the system and puts in a target of 75%. It sends uh, an approval request to his manager because they need to be aligned, but it provisionally adds it to the, the dashboard so we can see how he's doing. So far, he's only been hitting on 50% of his projects. He just wrapped up that Dean Tree implementation, so he wants to go and close that out. And once he does, he's going to go back to his employee center and we'll refresh this portlet. And immediately, real time, he can see exactly how that project has impacted his goals and his achievement towards those goals. He and his manager can use this throughout the period to actively help him achieve his goals. And at the end of the, the, the period, this, these will be automatically added to his performance review. So again, we're redefining, reimagining performance in, in management in a way that no point solution ever could. We're making it relevant, we're making it real time, we're making it objective using data from across the suite. That is sweetness. In today's marketplace, innovative companies win with the ability to capitalize on opportunities, maximize productivity of your resources, proactively manage risk, and deliver value through multiple revenue channels. It doesn't matter if your business is software, an ad agency, a consultancy, or a hybrid of, of multiple of those. From winning new business to scoping project delivery, driving upsell through managing project execution, and ultimately growing your people, NetSuite is helping you grow beyond. Thank you. So we've shown you stories about how we're enabling growth for product businesses and service businesses. In any business, financials are critical, and all roads lead through the finance department. We're seeing the role of the finance department change from a recorder of history to a strategic driver of growth. To tell you about some of the ways we're enabling the modern finance function, I'd like to welcome another Sweet World Stage veteran, one who's known for describing our international plans with a British accent, leaving us all to wonder, is he British or just faking it to make himself sound more international? I'll let you be the judge, Craig Sullivan, GVP Product Management. Thank you, Gary. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here at Sweet World in 2019 to, uh, to deliver the updates in the finance areas of the product for you. And as Gary mentioned, finance is at the heart of the business. And based upon the registration numbers here at Sweet World this week, finance people are at the heart of Sweet World too. And in fact, we've crunched the numbers. There are so many accountants in the room right now that the chances are, if you're not one yourself, you're sitting next to one. So take a look around. These people do look like everyone else, so it may be difficult to spot them. <clears throat> so anyway, finance is at the core of the suite, and the role of finance is evolving. It's no longer just about the back office. Finance is a key contributor to strategy, to the execution of growth, and a provider of insight to the rest of the business. And we recently undertook a global survey with finance professionals from over 1,000 companies around the world. And their top five concerns, it's how to better serve the business. And even the fifth one, productivity, it speaks to how they can serve the business more efficiently. And what an altruistic bunch the finance organization is. So let's help them help the rest of you. And the good news is that two of our four pillars of investment in finance address these concerns exactly, productivity and visibility. And in addition, we've continued to invest in enabling international growth because that's happening in real time. But let's start with that wonderful world of compliance, that ever-changing world of standards that you can't ignore, the fundamentals that must be addressed in order for your business to thrive. And I'll talk about peace of mind capabilities in three key areas, approvals, tax, and financial standards. 
The next week journey is very much a journey of a, a memory lane of financial standards. Don't we all remember 2009, the year of RevRec, EITF 0801, EITF 0903, and a few others as well. And just four years ago, ASC 606, IRFS 15. Those were good times. And along the way, we've helped you handle similar standards changes without skipping a beat. And now with the latest release, and Evan mentioned this earlier on today, we've updated the fixed assets module to handle the new lease accounting standards. And that's ASC 842 and IFRS 16. For those of you that are taking notes, and I can see that there are some. Um, not only does the system post the discounted lease payments into the balance sheet, but we automate the lease and interest expense postings monthly into the income statement or profit and loss accounts. Ease of use on the uh, financial standards there. We've also made some investments, and we're, we're looking forward to um, enhancing approval processes because business is getting faster, more complex, and more geographically dispersed. Your business systems need to recognize this and evolve with you while providing the controls you need to comply. And NetSuite's long been strong in this area, but it required some technical skill, to really, technical skill to really pull that off. So we've been working on making it simpler and easier. So let's take a look at the new approval designer. So here we are on a page that shows you the existing bill approval processes for vendor transactions. We'll click the Create New, and we'll go into the approval designer where we can see um, a whole bunch of fields that are related in context to the, the, the transactions you're going to approve. And we can drag in a field called person, and we can look up related fields on the originating purchase orders for this bill so that the person that place, placed the order in the first instance can actually approve the vendor bill when it comes into the business. Next, we want to add a purchasing manager. We want to make sure that each of those transactions are approved by a purchasing manager as well. And as you can see on the right-hand side, we're also adding the ability to send emails out for approvals. In our organization, anything over 10,000 needs a couple of extra approvals as well. So we can go back to the left-hand side and drag in an amount field, select the greater than or equal to option there in the drop-down, and enter $10,000 into the amount field. And that will ensure that new transactions are routed to the appropriate people if they exceed that value. So next, we can go back drag in the roles that we want to make sure these go to. So in our organization, as in many of yours, we're going to have the CFO approve some of those larger transactions. And just to be sure, we're also going to have the CEO approve those transactions as well. And on the right-hand side, you see that we're in identifying that we're going to send those to the individuals via email. So once we're done, we can update the description of this approval process. We can go ahead and save it. And then we can also go ahead and make it active just by clicking that toggle button on the top right. So now that's done, we can go back to the transactions itself. And if we go and hover over the pending approval status, we can see the history of all the approvals that have occurred. And we can see that there's one additional approval, which is the CEO, Jane Schmidt. And Jane has actually just received that notification on her phone. She can see all the information about what the transaction is, the value is, and importantly, who's approved it before her. So she can then go ahead and approve that, confident in knowing that the rest of her team have, uh, have done their work as well. And once she sends that, that goes back into NetSuite, and the approval process is completed in the system. So some great new, thank you, thank you very much. Some great new ease of use improvements coming to approval processes very soon. Moving on to tax. We heard a lot about sweet tax in the keynotes earlier on today as well. Uh, tax has been a key area of reinvention for us for the past few years, and that's been led by demands of your growing businesses and also advancing sophistication of local authorities everywhere. We've made some tremendous progress ourselves. We've recently released auto updates for tax rates and origin and destination-based tax determination and exemption certificates. And most recently, we, we released making tax digital capabilities for businesses that are operating in the UK. And we're working on much more going forward. But one of the really interesting things is the growth and the, the, uh, the vibrancy of the Sweet Tax partner community. And I'm very happy to say that our longest starting tax partner, Avalara, has recently joined the Sweet Tax program. And to talk about how they're helping businesses handle taxes more efficiently, I'd like to invite Mark Jansen, Vice President at Avalara, and Rick Gemroth, CIO at a customer of ours called Lionel. Gentlemen. Great. Hey, welcome to you again. Good to see you. Great. Thanks for joining us. All right, so Mark, 
Um, we obviously at NetSuite know about Avalara. We've been working with together for a long time, but maybe some of the audience members don't. So why don't you give us a little update on Avalara? So for those of you who don't know Avalara, we're leaders in tax compliance automation worldwide. We live in the solutions you already use to run your business. We exist at that magic moment of commerce when you swipe a credit card, create an invoice, do an e-commerce transaction, and seamlessly provide tax compliance for those. We have over 25,000 customers around the globe, over 1,300 of which we share with NetSuite. Fantastic, fantastic. And Rick, why don't you tell us about Lionel? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks Craig and Mark for having me here today. I'm proud to be on stage with Avalara and NetSuite. So Lionel, we have two product lines. We make Lionel trains, and we, make, or we have Lionel racing. Lionel trains makes the trains that I hope you all have around your Christmas trees during the holiday season. Lionel Racing makes the exact replica die cast of the cars that run on the tracks for the NASCAR series of races. Excellent, some very cool products. And uh, tell us a little bit how about, about how you're using NetSuite and Avalara together. Will do. So we're an omni-channel business serving over 10,000 customers. We selected NetSuite to be our ERP in 2010. It has been a great system for us. We use the finance accounting segment for our back office systems. We use the supply chain segment for our inventory management and our warehouse operations. And we use the customer relationship segment to manage and monitor, help us manage and monitor our customers, contacts, sales orders so that we can turn them into cash. We also use Sweet Commerce Advance for our two e-commerce websites. That, that, and sorry, Craig, the, uh, that is all integrated with Avalara, their um, tax automation system that, ha that allows us to stay compliant with our taxes. Fantastic. So you're using pretty much the entire suite then to run your sure. business in conjunction with Avalara. That's great. So tell us why June 21st, 2018 was such a big day for you guys. So J June 21st was a huge day for us and for Lionel. It was a major disruption to businesses in the United States when the United States Supreme Court ruled in South Dakota versus Wayfair that tax compliance for sales tax was going to change dramatically. Instead of only having to collect tax in places where you have a physical presence, you would now have to collect tax everywhere where you have an economic nexus. Mm -hmm. So many, many businesses like Lionel had a huge change on that day. Yeah, you know, the first thing we did was call our friends at Avalara then we went to a local bar and started our planning. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It, w it was a major impact to us. At that point in time, we're only collecting taxes in six states of where we had an operating presence. By the end of 2018, we were collecting taxes in 20 states. The states set their own rules for when you have to start collecting taxes. And unfortunately, they're all dissimilar. Some states are collecting taxes by the number of transactions you have. Some states are collecting track transactions by they're collecting sales tax based on the revenue, and some of the combination thereof. So when we were all said and done with this, it really wasn't that big of a deal for us because of the Avalara application. We knew all we had to do was go into the Avalara application and activate the states that we needed to collect taxes in. No mess, no stress. <laughs> Excellent. But we all know this is still evolving, right? Yes, it is. In fact, California's new economic nexus rules went into effect yesterday. And at the same time, the state of Rhode Island announced their new economic nexus rules coming out this summer. Well, I can imagine that could be a little bit overwhelming for you, perhaps, or it maybe is. not. And we recognize more and more states are going to want us to collect taxes. And one of the great features of Avalara is when the states set the rules, Avalara will notify us when we're closing in on the threshold in which we have to start collecting taxes. So we don't need to monitor the number of transactions. We don't need them, them to monitor the amount of revenue that's being generated. All we do is get an alert from Avalara, and then we activate that state to collect the taxes. Excellent. It sounds like you've got that covered. So Mark, what's next? So obviously, it's not just unplanned events like Wayfair in which you need to think about tax compliance automation. It's really the planned changes as well. So when you're introducing new products 
expanding into new regions around the world, such as EMEA, expanding your systems internally, growing globally. Um, this week, we have, are proud to announce that we've brought all of the features of our existing integration for Avatax to SuiteTax. So all NetSuite customers can now use them. Fantastic. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for telling us the Avalara story Thank you, Craig. and the Lionel right, story. Craig. Thank Good you. Good to see you all. And Avalara has a booth in the Expo Hall. It's one of the biggest ones there, so you can't really miss it. And, and Mark and Rick are going to be there all week to, uh, to answer questions. And it's fortunate that Mark mentioned international expansion, something near and dear to my heart, particularly today. Um, it's been our number one business priority since we were acquired by Oracle a couple of years ago. And everything we build, all of the things that you've seen earlier today and you'll see later this week as well, are being built to enable business processes globally. And our product vision, Act Global, well, you guys have, have really taken it to heart. The international journey has been incredible. There are 67,000 subsidiaries running in, in NetSuite and over, well, in 212 countries. And that's 212. And Evan mentioned this number earlier on today, but I wanted to make sure that it was really, really visible for you to understand that. It really represents an enormous footprint and, and credit to the team and the partners and you as customers that have taken NetSuite into all of these markets. And more than 80% of transactions in NetSuite today are international outside of the United, United States. And at the same time, we keep focusing on the be local part of our vision as well. We've been checking off those acronyms that we've talked about in the past. We recently delivered 21 new countries of localization for, for markets like Mexico and India, Germany, France, and Brazil, some of the largest and most challenging economies in the world. And these capabilities are the foundation of our localized suite success editions as well. So whether you're HQ'd in any of the countries that we've mentioned, or whether you've got op operating subs there, NetSuite is enabling you to grow beyond. And we've also worked on enhancing capabilities for businesses that have employees based overseas. You may be HQ'd in the US and you've sent someone over for a long-term project into Europe. So we've enhanced our expense reporting capabilities to support those situations as well. So let's take a look at that. So here we are in the NetSuite mobile app. From the mobile app now, I can go ahead and create a new entry. I can scan a receipt from my, from my camera. There's a flight receipt from British Airways here for a flight from London to Paris. I can go ahead and enter the date, so 27th of March. I can put 120 pounds sterling in there, which is the cost of that flight. And I can enter the category, travel, airfare, and then just put a little bit of information in there because that's what we're required to do as part of our expense policy. So London to Paris. And once I've created that entry, I can go ahead and save it. And then from the dashboard, I can I pull up any of the receipts that I've captured before. In this case, we've got two, one for 220 euros, and that one that I've just entered for 120 pounds. And I can submit that up to NetSuite as part of my expense report. Now, once that's up there, I can make a decision as I'm based in Paris to have that repaid to me in euros rather than my base currency of US dollars, because that's going to be easier and more convenient. I don't have to do bank transfers, et cetera. And so I can make that change. That will be submitted into the system. And then at the summary page, we'll see that that has been converted into the currency of the, uh, of the, of the payment. And on the, uh, the subtotals here, I can see that we've got the base currency value stored as well. So that's a great new capability that's going to support US businesses with employees that travel and are based overseas. It's available on any device in any of the UI languages that we support on, on all of the currencies. So switching to productivity. And while it was the fifth in the survey, we know, that here, we know that improvements here mean that you can spend more time getting visibility and providing insight for the rest of the business. And one of the areas that we've heard a lot about is cash management and banking. Our vision in this area is to have a, a touchless, automated, and an intelligent experience, because we know how much time you spend on these processes in your organization. And we've addressed accounts receivable and accounts payable processes by adding support for two-stage payments, an automated bank-to-book reconciliation, flexible bank, bank file passing, and auto-matching of transactions. But beyond that, we know that cash management itself is evolving. You want your bank to come to you, not you have to go to the bank. So we're hard at work on APIs, enabling connectivity with a wide range of banks, 
First, to automate your everyday processes, but then by bringing banks closer, we're able to unlock even more value from the suite. We're forming relationships with some of the largest financial institutions in the world, and some of them are here in the Expo Hall this week. Altogether, this is going to make it easier for new customers to adopt NetSuite and for existing customers to become more producti productive with the ease of consumer-based banking experiences right within the NetSuite system. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to visibility and insight. For the modern finance function, automating processes really is not enough. Businesses want to be able to do things dramatically better than they did before, and that means visibility. The ability to understand the entire business, your inventory, your people, your sales, your purchasing. And we've seen some of that in the demos that have been shown earlier today. But being part of the Oracle family has created opportunities for us to benefit from other offerings like never before, which brings us to the Oracle NetSuite planning and budgeting cloud services, which is much easier to say with its acronym, which is PBCS. And it's an incredible set of capabilities to understand what's going on in the business. So let's take a quick look at how that can work. So here we are. We're looking at a single product view. We can drill in here and see what's going on for historical buying trends by customer for this particular product. With the graphs at the bottom, they're interactive, so we can drag and drop and move the worst case and the best case and the predicted forecast and use that to actually update the working forecast in the system. From there, we can go ahead and adjust the inventory restock volumes to match the sales that we've just modified so that everything is up to date and in sync in PBCS. And with sweet people data now available in PBCS, we can take a look at how the organization is structured with headcount levels and drill in and see who's based in which department and make sure that our organization is optimized for the growth that's coming. And then going back into the customer sales level forecast, we can view groups of customers and expand the pie charts for details to see what's going on and how the breakdown of the transaction activity looks. And then going all the way back to cash management, PBCS allows us to view both the historical and the forecasted cash flow based on the real data that's coming out of the NetSuite system. So you can plan for the ebbs and flows in your business and make the most of your working capital. So that's Oracle NetSuite PBCS. And PBCS is now available, announced today, as a component of our Suite Success Editions. And we've got predefined templates for all of our industry offerings. And it's a really great tool for finance to get the insight that they need to, to provide those value-added services back to the rest of the organization. So for all of you here in finance roles, that's what we're up to in the finance areas of the suite, focusing on the key things that you've told us that you care about. And for everyone else, remember that statistically speaking, while you're here at Sweet World, you will be never more than six feet away from someone in a finance role. But don't be afraid. The survey shows that they only want to help you. Thank you very much. Back to you, Gary. Craig, thank you very much. Fantastic shirt. Amazing how you fake that accent. So we're running a little bit behind. So to make it faster and easier for you to make your next session, I'm going to go a little quickly, only a little. So in the same way that financials underpins your business, our technology underpins the suite and enables everything we've shown you today. We're creating and leveraging the best technology in the world in order to give you the agility, visibility, and productivity you need. We're going to talk about it in five groups. We continue to invest massively in each of these areas, the infrastructure, suite cloud, platform, suite analytics, the intelligent suite, and the user experience. And I'm going to show you some highlights of each. So starting on the infrastructure, and Evan and Mark talked a lot about this uh, this morning. This has been one of the, the many benefits of becoming part of Oracle. Oracle is inventing truly the best infrastructure and database technology on the planet. And we now have direct access to it, and more importantly, to the rock star engineers who are creating it. It's the next leap in cloud technology and it enables us to scale to support your growth virtually without limit. OCI, Oracle Multi-Tenancy, and the Oracle Autonomous Database give us a number of benefits. They give us even greater elasticity and scalability, both vertically to, to scale with your growth and horizontally to spin up new data centers. They provide even faster, more consistent performance. Previously, a peak load by one customer might impact other customers, but with Oracle Multi-Tenancy's model, load is isolated, performance is more consistent. 
and OCI and especially the autonomous database will give us a huge efficiency boost by automating the database management for us so we can invest more of our time in building solutions for you rather than running data centers. As I said, OCI enables us to turn on new data centers more quickly. We currently have six data centers that we've built over the last 20 years. In the next 20 months or so, we'll turn on our next six with OCI. This will provide even greater scalability for your growth and provide faster performance for customers in those regions. Before I talk more about the benefits of OCI and multi-tenancy, I'd like to talk briefly about our NetSuite system administrators. NetSuite admins are often unsung heroes. They're the key liaisons between, uh, between us and, and your other users. They're on point for configuring, customizing, and extending the suite and tailoring it to your business and your users. We love all of our users, but admins do have a bit of a special place in our hearts. We love them so much, we made t-shirts. Who wants a t-shirt? We have people throwing them around, too. <laughs> I definitely could have cut that out to save time, but it's just too much fun. Um, I had an ulterior motive in doing that. I want to show the admins the love, but I really wanted to shoot one of those things. I've always wanted to. Um, hopefully, no one was injured. Um, there, we have a few more t-shirts available in our Devland zone, so please make sure you check it, check it out. Only a few, though. Um, so this next section is what we like to call our admin love section. So f first, a big benefit of Oracle multi-tenancy. Currently, major releases like 19.1 are delivered in three phases. And the release dates for those are fixed for most customers. Starting later this year, we're going to put more control in your hands to determine the upgrade and maintenance dates. So the admin will be notified of an upcoming. <laughs> the admins are always the rowdiest people in, on these things. That's why we gave you t-shirts. The admin will be notified of an upcoming release, and then you can, uh, oh, and then we will intelligently recommend a date and time for you based on the uh, points of lowest activity in your specific account. But you get to decide when you actually upgrade within a set window of time. Next, a big advancement in our sandbox environment. So sandboxes are invaluable tools for developing and testing changes in your accounts. You told us that you wanted sandbox refreshes to be uh, quicker and more predictable, and we've listened. We've put significant work in to making the, the refresh process more robust and predictable. And I'm very happy to report that now over 95% of Sandbox refresh is complete in less than a day, helping you be more productive. You've heard me say it. You're going to hear me say it again. We're focused on making it faster and easier for you to do your jobs. Performance of the system is a key part of that. And a key element of improving performance for the users is giving admins better visibility into the aspects of performance that you control. We've added two great new capabilities to our application performance management tool. First, rolling out very soon, we've added Record Profiler. This allows you to see a detailed breakdown of the processing time for any record in the suite during view, save, edit, or delete on UI pages, in suite script, and in web services. You can see exactly where every millisecond is going to help you identify and assess or address performance bottlenecks. Thank you. And second, performance is obviously critical in a retail or point of sale environment. So later this year, we're adding application performance monitoring for sweet commerce in-store. The critical actions carousel at the top makes it easy to see which steps in the checkout process are taking the most time and are the most frequent. The action timeline on the bottom plots the median and 95th percentile execution times over time, making it easy for you to identify anomalies and trends. So with this visibility, you can optimize performance for not only your users, but also your shoppers. All right. So we're done with the infrastructure section, but we're not done showing admins a love. We've got more. The Sweet Cloud platform is all about enabling the agility you need to grow and succeed. We're delivering a huge number of new and improved capabilities across Sweet Builder, Sweet Script, Sweet Flow, Sweet Talk, Sweet Cloud Development. 
we like that sweet word. Um, I want to show you two of them. So as we've talked about, we're focusing on creating even better, more tailored experiences for our users. And that doesn't apply to only the, the pages that we build, but also the custom pages that admins build. Our new page builder makes it faster and easier for admins to create tailored pages with less coding. So even developers who don't have front-end development experience can create great custom UIs. It's an optimized experience for creating optimized experiences. <laughs> so Sheila, a NetSuite admin, is building a page to send email surveys to customers after they've interacted with the support department. Here on the page builder, she can see that it comes with a, a set of pre-built templates. She's going to use single column. Now she drills in, and there are a broad set of components. She's going to drag the heading component up and give it a name. Next, she's going to add the search form component, which returns a list of results from a, an existing workbook, in this case, a workbook of recently closed support cases. She's going to add header filters for customer and date created. And next, uh, to add the, the business logic, she clicks on the Behavior tab. She's going to enable row selection. And you see that there is a column of checkboxes added to the table. And she's going to add an action, link this to a script that she wrote previously that emails out the survey. When she does that, a Send button is added to the UI as well. She wants to enable the end users to inline edit the memo field. So she's going to enable that. And now we're set. Oh, very cool feature. She can preview the page right in line. Even cooler feature, she can preview the auto-generated co code right in line. If she wants to change it, she could export it to an IDE. But we're all set, so we're going to deploy it. She simply specifies where in the menu structure it should go, lists and support in this case, and clicks deploy. She gets a notification that it's complete. Now let's go check it out. She goes. And there it is listed. Looks great. Let's send a couple. And we get a notification that the surveys were sent. So thank you. A faster and easier tool for making faster and easier tools for users. That's exactly. That's a double drink. So seriously, take it easy, though. We're not done yet. Uh, managing customization changes between sandbox and production can be challenging. We're going to give you a tool that you'll love that makes this very complicated task easy. So now our admin, Sheila, is going to use that, the, the new customization deployment tool to deploy the send survey page she just made to production for her support team. So we're in Sandbox on the new customization deployment screen. She can see all the customization projects in the Sandbox, as well as the accounts they've been deployed to. She's going to create a new project. And the UI guides her through the process, making it very easy. Lists all the customization objects in that sandbox with key information like name and ID. Gives her filters at the top to find exactly the objects she's looking for. She's looking for, uh, she just created that tool earlier today, so she's going to click on today and me. And there they are. She selects them, clicks on add selected. It'll confirm those are the right ones. She could add more if she needed to, but she doesn't right now. She'll give it a name and select the account or accounts to deploy it to, in this case, production. Also note that we're going to create a pre-deployment snapshot. We'll come back to that later. Now on the next page, something very powerful, the system's going to automatically detect and identify all the objects that need to be added or modified, including dependent objects, so there are no inconsistencies or problems. Runs validation. Everything looks good. She has the option of deploying it at a later date and time. But in this case, we want to get it out there, so we're going to deploy now. It gives her a real-time status as she goes through the deployment process, and then a notification that it's complete. So now let's switch over to the production account. And in the new deployment audit trail, I mentioned that snapshot earlier. She clicks on the inspect, and she can see right there for each customization object the status before deployment and after. And for things that were modified, she can even see what was modified. So in this case, it was a custom list. She can see the values of that custom list before deployment and after. So giving admins even easier agility to tailor NetSuite for you. I love admins. All right, I want to talk about one of our favorite parts of Sweet World, Hackathon for Good. 
So yesterday we held our sixth annual Hackathon for Good, and 88 customers, partners, and NetSuite employees teamed up to solve challenges for two fantastic organizations and, and who are customers of ours. First, Mana Nutrition. Helping malnourished children by providing life-saving food is the primary focus of Mana Nutrition. And the quality of that food is critical because even small changes can cause health issues for the malnourished populations they serve. To increase quality, Man is working to implement Six Sigma controls in their food process. They need line workers to be able to efficiently enter more than 450 test results per day. So the challenge for them was finding an easier way to capture, analyze, and track inspection data. Second, Art in Action. Art in Action provides a curriculum to equip people, many volunteers, to teach children about art. The curriculums are designed to, to include supplies and resources tied to each of the different lessons and exercises. I've experienced uh, the benefits of this program directly. The elementary school where my children uh, went to school used this, this program. Both of my kids learned a lot about art uh, and gained a much deeper appreciation for art through the program. And in fact, my wife was a volunteer docent uh, in the program and, and taught many students. Fantastic. They're both fantastic programs. The challenge is to simplify how they manage the disparate components of the many curriculums that they supply and coordinating the entire supply chain including commerce, with improved automation and visibility. The judges had a very hard time deciding, but ultimately were uh, selected one team for each challenge that we're announcing as the winning teams. And they are for Art in Action. It's Heart for Art. Their solution featured a unique use of RMAs to manage the accounting impact of the donated materials. For MANA, it's Manifestation. The team delivered visual dashboards, including smiley faces, to clearly communicate status and integrated reporting APIs, to, uh, Google reporting APIs, to present trends. So thank you to all who participated, and even more so, you know, thank you to Mana Nutrition and Art in Action for the fantastic work you do for so many. Now for our Your Suite Award. So each year we recognize a customer who uses innovation and the agility of the SuiteCloud platform to tailor NetSuite and make it into their suite. I'm very pleased to announce that the winner of the 2019 Your Suite Award is Transform Aid International, based in North Ride, Australia. <laughs> For 60 years, they've been dedicated to ending poverty through community development projects and disaster relief in 18 countries. They've impacted the lives of over 300,000 people, including 110,000 children. They created a custom donation management solution on SuiteCloud to automate donation solicitation, payments, and aid disbursement. I'd like to congratulate Rob De Carvalho and his team on winning the 2019 Your Suite Award. And more importantly, from all of us, I think, I'd like to thank them for the enormous impact they're having on so many people in need. So thank you, Rob and team. So moving on to analytics, as Evan announced this morning, we're very excited to have released our new suite analytic, uh, analytics workbooks. They're a fantastic complement to reports and saved searches. They make building queries both simpler and more powerful. They include drag and drop pivoting, rich data vi visualization through charts, and you can also uh, share that data, those charts, through dashboards. Throughout the session, throughout the demos, we've already shown you demos of some of the new workbook capabilities as well as some of what's coming next. But I want to quickly summarize the highlights of what's coming next. In upcoming releases, we'll continue to refine query building, pivoting, and charting, including adding new chart types. As usual, much of what we do will be driven by the feedback that you give us. So please, please tell us what's working well, what you like, and what we can do better. With 19.1, we're releasing two pre-built workbooks in beta. These are both focused on what may be the most important metric for you, sales. In the coming releases, we're going to deliver many more pre-built workbooks out of the box, tailored to various roles and various tasks. And we'll also enable partners and developers to create workbooks and distribute them with their suite apps. We'll increasingly give you visibility and insight while you're doing your key tasks everywhere in the suite, embedding analytics in uh, many different pages, not just you know, reports or saved searches, but in dashboards, forms, uh, and maybe you know, pretty much any other page. And then finally, we'll enable you to create your own intelligent insights by embedding sophisticated data science functions, like the customer segmentation uh, clustering analysis we showed you earlier. 
So this release of Suite Analytics is a great leap forward, but it's really only the first step. And we have much, much, much more planned and coming for you. Thank you. Thank you. And please, please, make sure you check it out and start using it. It is it's an unbelievable tool. Uh, all right, intelligence. So last year, we introduced the intelligence suite. And made, uh, we've made great progress since then. We're in the process of building out our data science and machine learning engines and framework. We've trained hundreds of our developers in new AI and ML technologies. We've started designing and building our first set of intelligent applications, some of which we showed you today. So we're applying intelligence across the suite in three key ways. First, intelligent insights, uncovering expected, unexpected correlations and predicting what's going to happen next and recommending what you should do about it. You, some of the examples you saw were the project budget analysis, the supply chain control tower, and customer segmentation. Next is intelligent automation, learning and automating tasks that normally require manual work. Again, we saw this in the project risk prediction, the sales revenue, and predictive planning. And third is intelligent interaction where we learn how you use NetSuite and automatically ta tailor the experience to you. We saw this in our new sales experience, as well as the timesheet chat interface. Our first intelligent feature is targeted to be released later this year. And we have many more in the works. So you'll see many more coming rapidly after that. We're very excited about it. It's going to be a game changer. Thank you. So I want to close on experience in part because it's something that, that is very, very important to me personally. And I think it may be the most important thing we're doing. As I said earlier, our goal is not to just meet your needs. We believe that's setting the bar way, way too low. Our goal is to solve your most important needs in ways that truly delight you, so you can't imagine doing it any other way. We know we're not there yet, everywhere in the suite, but Believe me, we are very committed to getting there and working very hard to get there, and we believe we will. We're increasingly optimizing and tailoring the experience for each role and task, as I've talked about. You've seen many examples of it today. And to make this possible, we've been making huge investments in our UI technology, as well as in, our, in, in ramping up our design teams. Even something as fundamental and common as a sales transaction shouldn't always be the same for every user. As we've shown today, the fastest and easiest uh, way uh, to create a sales order in a product company may not be the fastest and easiest way to create an estimate in a services company. In addition to tailoring experiences to roles and tasks, we're also rethinking every interaction, every micro interaction, to make the experience more intuitive, faster, and easier for you. And I want to show you a few examples. So again, tabs, reimagined tabs, are no longer for navigation or just navigation. They also guide you through the process and give you summary information. And when you scroll down a form, that summary information isn't lost. We lock it, key information in place. And even the header of tables, wait for it, wait for it, boom, get locked into place. So as you're working with long tables, you, don't, you always know exactly what every field is. We're think, rethinking micro interactions like how field labels and values interact. We're giving you inline, real time notifications and information. For example, if you make a data entry error, we don't wait until you save the form to tell you about it. We tell you immediately so you can correct it immediately. We're embedding analytics and intelligence right into to every page so you can use those insights as you're doing your work, not need to go somewhere else to get the information. Yes, you can close that if you don't need it or you need more screen real estate. We're making tables, and, uh, tables faster and easier to use by doing things like allowing you to hide and show less frequently used columns. Simply drag to reorder columns. And if you need to scroll horizontally, wait for it. There it is. Key columns stay locked into place. We're making it easier to, to uh, work with large lists like the item list, using intelligence to recommend the most likely items and also allowing you to filter the lists instead of needing to scroll through them. Now, the right information to put on the screen is different for different tasks and roles and users. So we're going to allow you to choose how much information to put on the screen. We'll give you density settings. And if you want to put more information on the screen for your task, no problem. A com compact setting like this will allow it. And then to make it faster for you to do your job, we're not going to make you wait for, our to, for us to do ours. 
So when you save a transaction, this time you don't have to wait for it. We immediately take you to the next page. We process our work in the background and then notify you when it's done. Again, reimagining the business user experience. These are all things that we're working in now and you'll see rolling out over the coming releases. So today we, we told you a couple of growth stories to show you some of, of what we're working on for you. But the real growth story, the important growth story, is yours. You each have a unique growth story. We're honored and excited that you've chosen to make NetSuite a part of your growth story, and we're absolutely committed to helping you achieve it. Thank you very much for attending SweetWorld.